Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, welcome to the insanity that is Nebula 2. This instrument is a small body electroacoustic with multi-scale fretting system and no small amount of my insanity imbued in this wood. Now that's an intro, isn't it? I've got to make some progress. Last week I drew some lines and I asked you guys what your opinion was. Should we bevel the edges? Should we add uh, essentially copying Nebula 1? Uh, and potentially even add a larger uh, comfort bevel here with uh, gluing on extra wood in the same way that you would on a really high-end acoustic guitar. This is hopefully some of those things. And I was going to leave some faux binding and we'd have the, the gold of the of the burl maple underneath the finish next to the blues and purples and, and bits and pieces that uh, is the planned finish. And we had mixed responses. Many said yay, many said nay. And the most important person, the client who commissioned this guitar, you too can commission a guitar from us. Uh, he said no. He fell in love with the original Nebula loves the blues and the purples and the blacks and all that sort of stuff. And that's what he wants to see. And that's what we're going to give him. This instrument has a lot of inclusions and it's part of the, the beauty of it. We've got lots of tiny little holes that need to be filled uh, in order to make the final finish look as stunning as it, it, uh, as it needs to. This is going to be super high gloss. There will probably be a week where you won't get one of these videos because it's in the spray booth and uh, yeah but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The question then becomes do you grain fill before or after uh, your stain etc and I get this question quite a lot in the live streams and, and uh, via email etc. Normally I would say you grain fill you mix dust and glue uh, if you're going to have a stain you want to have uh, wood glue that is mixed with dust from the guitar that you're working, very fine dust, and put as much dust in that glue as it will hold while still remaining just a tiny little bit tacky. And you will have a better chance of being able to stain that uh, resultant mess of material. I'm not doing that today. I am going to sand this guitar down to 320 grit, get rid of all of these excess lines and things. And I am also not going to damp down the guitar and then sand her back and then damp it down and sand her back. If I was just applying a straight stain, i.e. not messing around in any way, shape or form, I would raise the grain a few times uh, on something especially this beautiful uh, and especially if I'm using a water-based stain. And that will, when I finally apply the stain, remove any furriness and give you a better finish. The thing is though, in this one, I'm going to be applying a stain and then sanding that stain back, thus raising the grain and flattening it back. I'm then going to be applying a multitude of stains and other things as well. And all of these things are going to raise the grain and da, 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 da. The end result is going to be a flaming hot mess. Hopefully a, a, a nebula-esque flaming hot mess. Full of stars and sunshine and beautiful things. Not a steaming hot mess, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, here is how we got to this point. Wow, 
Burnett. Today, the fun begins. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! I'm a little bit too excited, actually. I know my next stage is sanding, and yet, I'm happy. Oh, yes, I am. Don't sand a guitar more than 320 grit. It's really superfluous. You don't need to go higher than that. You're just burnishing the wood and uh, causing issues. But that's enough of me talking. It's a drum. I created a drum. Alrighty, so we have something finally sanded down to 220 grit, and that's 320 grit. This is even more confusing because the 320 grit in the UK is not 320 grit in America. I have got to lightly bevel these edges. We're going to stain them, they're not going to be faux, but having a hard edge anywhere on a guitar is a bad idea, not only for comfort, but for longevity. Um, bevels or roundovers are minimize dents, essentially. And yeah, you know, this is beautiful. Should be incredibly beautiful. But it is also going to be played. It has to be played. They do, they have to. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to gently bevel these edges off now, onwards. So at the end of the 320 grit, uh, I'm going over the whole thing. You saw me sand, I nearly said with the grain. To try and sand with the grain on this would drive a man insane, or, or, or more insane. Uh, anyway, uh, I random orbitalized myself as the final pass, and we're about to apply the first coat of stain, basically. It's Let's do that. Uh, stunning stains, black, water-based stain. Always shake your stains up. And uh, gloves, need gloves. This is, uh, this is the point of no return. A lot of you wanted to leave this natural but uh, from conception, this was gonna happen. This is also where I find if there's any more sanding to do. Okay.
Okay, we're all right. This, this is one of those jobs that's just not particularly fun. I think I'm going to, I'm going to stay in the side of the binding. Uh, I'm going to leave the front of the binding and let that do what it wants to do, but the sides of it are going to be stained and then sanded back, which is just going to accentuate everything, and then we'll be able to have blues and golds and, and stuff. So we're not, we're not done yet. Okay. I am <sighs> onwards onto some color. All right, you beauties, I've got a second camera game. We're going to try that split screen beautiful stuff again. I am going with various water-based stains. I've got purple, I've got amber, I've got a couple of different blues, there's black. I think, uh, I also actually think a little bit of cherry red uh, will not go amiss. And green, we need green. Uh, there actually was green in the original nebula in bits and pieces. This is going to look terrible in progress. It is then going to hopefully look amazing. I am applying stain. I am then going to sand it back a little bit after I have applied various little pieces of grain filler. I am not worried about filling the largest cracks and cavities. The plan is that we are going to uh, fill what we can and apply lacquer and all of that jazz and anything that is larger and is not properly filled is going to be essentially painted a matte black to emphasize the fact that that isn't shiny and it's going to add even more character to the reflections and uh, fun stuff going on. I'm gesticulating for some reason. I think I'm excited. Purple. <laughs> this is one of the earliest stains that we did. I, I, the old paper label. Uh, I've had this for a long time. I am going to start with just the top. Now, once the grain filler has been in and I've sanded that back, I will then apply more stain. Uh, the, the issue with grain fillers and things is that it, will, it tends to want to stop stain from uh, applying itself to the wood beneath, the substrate. So this is why we're doing it this way. more like me you don't know how to be how to reach out to the 
So this is the gold grain enhancing filler. We really should make a silver one. And essentially you can see what's happening here uh, by flooding it on and then rubbing across. You're taking off the excess from the top of the instrument and leaving filler in the open port. Now I'm gonna do another couple of passes of this and play around with little pieces of super glue and probably some aluminium powder or something like that. This does look like a little bit of a mess at the moment, but it is, well, as planned. I really like the sheen that you get of the gold. I mean, that does look like a cloud of stars, doesn't it? or a cloud of dust or something. Onwards, so I'm gonna let this cure for a bit, put some more on, and then we'll be sanding and staining and filling and playing. Okay, I'm going to rub this down and see where we are. See what I mean? So here we are with before sanded down. And there's our nebula. To be frank, I could probably just leave that as is. 
That's not gonna happen, but I could. So here's where we're at. And if you look at the other nebula, the first one, you'll see that we've already pretty much, we've got the same sort of thing going on. Uh, I do need to add more of this gold though. All right, let's have some fun. While the gold is, or the second and third coats of gold filler are drying on the front, I am going to crack on with staining the back. So here we are. And this is of course, just the first stage of doing the back. And sides. All right, so I think we just leave it here, yeah? Um, <laughs> actually, that's pretty shiny. So what we have here is uh, very, very much in progress. That's actually 
This actually could make a relatively interesting finish. Uh, can you can you imagine if we decided to leave it like this and utterly? I have a I I, I had a, a client once many years ago who. Long story short, I apologized for the delay in this build by saying, look, do you want me to uh, really seriously upgrade and I can make this guitar out of rose with a rosewood top, etc." It's like, yeah, 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 cool, that's excellent. And I built it and it was beautiful. And then he made me paint it solid black. Anyhow, uh, it is what it is. We're gonna, I'm gonna leave this. I might put another couple of coats on the back, but uh, I'm gonna leave this to cure overnight. I'm then gonna come in, sand it back, and play around with a little bit of stain, uh, but you're not gonna see any of that. You've seen enough of that process for this stage. Uh, well, do you know what? Just because I'm I've decided that I'm going to uh, uh, ignore rule m my rule number one, which is don't be an arsehole. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to leave this here. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Have you considered subscribing to our channel yet? Definitely subscribe because you're going to want to come back and see if I manage to pull this guitar back from this sort of. gaudy, golden mess of insanity and bring it to something epic. I think I can. I know I can. It's going to be amazing. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, <sighs> please consider supporting our Patreon. Have a look at the live streams. Uh, I am now going to be doing a live stream on Friday evenings at half past five uh, for uh, people on this side of the world and Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. which works out, uh, 9 p.m. UK time, which works out good for people in the rest of the world, apparently. I don't know. Uh, but come along, ask your questions, and uh, I'll see you there. The real reason we're stopping is because, uh, uh, yeah, I need a coffee. So do you. Goodbye.